these two guys have Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. And watch this Jamar Chase go to work. He's a router. I'm Rashad Breeland. Watch this double move right here. Bam, 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 bam. And ball's right there. Right there. Tiny. Beautiful stuff. <laughs> Well, we got another one on Dalvin Cook, too. We'll play on Purple Brian Daily. Baldinger doesn't just like football. He loves football. <laughs> There's another one? Can yeah, we we're, it? we're playing it for Purple Daily. Keep playing. Okay. All right. You got another one. You got to find us on Purple Daily if you want yeah. more of that. Can Keep you play playing. that one more time. It's Brian Baldinger just breaking down Vikings film. Man, watch this Jamar Chase go to work. He's a router. I'm Rashad Breeland. Watch this double move right here. Bam, 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 bam. And ball's right there. Right there. Tiny. Beautiful stuff. It's funny, <laughs> and yet I love it. Like, I, I sat there and watched Baldy break down various plays from Sunday's games for a half hour yesterday. <laughs> it's amazing. Because it's also really pretty good. And, like, he'll show you interior line play, and he gets excited by it all. Bam, 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 bam,
And the issue is Kirk Cousins needs to be, he can't be treated because you're paying him uh, um, huge money like you would treat Brady or Rodgers or that group. But that's how the Vikings and, and Zim in particular want to treat him. So I disagree completely with Keyshawn that, oh, just stick with Case. That would He would have come back and struggled wherever he played, and he ultimately did. I think he was with the Broncos in 2018. Mm -hmm. So I completely disagree that, oh, they should have just kept Case. And I understand the shot that that they took on Cousins, and only in retrospect now can I say after seeing it play out. And maybe it was up to the Vikings to see this, and they didn't. Perhaps people will give them a pass. But the reality was you couldn't have probably plugged Kirk Cousins into a worse system for, for from the human side. So not the play calling, the human side, as far as the coach and the attention paid to quarterback. So what is there a better, is there a cheaper, better quarterback the Vikings could have gone after? The answer is yes. I don't know who that is. And ultimately it probably was Teddy who got hurt in what, 2016. He might not have been ready for another couple of years. But no, but I'm saying I'm saying if he doesn't get hurt, that was what the Vikings sure. wanted. They they had a controllable quarterback who they absolutely loved, who was loved in the locker room and the head coach, it, you know, he still remains the only quarterback I've seen that Mike loved, like thought was great. Um but I am not on board with saying it's as simple as they 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 upgraded mildly and made a big mistake. They took a shot. And Kirk didn't work like you would have hoped. And in retrospect, now there's a lot to look back on and dissect. Uh, but the whole Keenum thing, I will never be on board with the whole, well, they should have just kept case and and things would have gone swimmingly. I think it would have been a disaster. Well, yeah, there is, you're right. There is a lot to unpack here. Um, let's start with the premise that the Vikings at the end of 2017, before you know getting smoked by the Eagles, even even after getting smoked by the Eagles, like the thought about the Vikings was this is a team with the best defense in the NFL, offensive weapons, Thielen, Diggs, you know, Dalvin Cook. Like this was a ready made Super Bowl contending team. And since then, they haven't been. They've been nowhere near Super Bowl contention in the three years. And now after a week one loss to the Bengals, I mean it's it's a long winding road this season if you want to get to Super Bowl contention. And so his his general point of look where they were before they signed Kirk with Case and look where they are now. I agree with you. I think it's too much of a leap to say, well, now that we've had the last three and a half years to see this play out, in retrospect, you should have kept Case. Well, I think Case was a ticking time bomb as a starting quarterback. And, you know, sometimes a guy just has a pop-up season – it's a magical carpet ride, and he's not meant to be, you know, two or three year long starting quarterback. I don't think Case would have come back and been the same guy. I think he would have struggled with that spotlight on him and with defenses and coaches getting a second chance to um, to prepare and scout him. But, but where I do agree with Keyshawn, because I think his he didn't say this explicitly, but I think his other main point was. Why would you lock in to a non-elite quarterback for that much guaranteed money when you can maintain your options? Thus, the dating mm-hmm. analogies, right? Why would you get mm-hmm. married when you can date and have your options open until you find the absolute right woman to marry? That's the analogy that he was trying to make. And Judd and I, for a few years, have talked about the different quarterback bins, the three main quarterback bins that you should probably be in if you're a franchise. And if you're not in if, if you're in a fourth or a fifth bin somewhere, you've got problems. The first bin is the most ideal bin, which is you've got a legit bona fide star quarterback, a game-changing guy that can elevate the things around you. Your offensive line isn't playing that well, it's not a deal breaker. Your defense isn't playing that well, it's not a deal breaker. We can still win 11 or 12 games with Russell Wilson, Pat Mahomes, Tom Brady, right? There's like six to eight, I don't know, maybe nine or ten. There's a gray area, but there's like, there's ten or fewer of these guys. Bin number two is you're developing a young, cheap, high upside guy like Cincinnati with Joe Burrow, Arizona with Kyler Murray, um, Mac Jones, rookie season here in New England, and you've get you've got like a four or five year period where the guy's not making that much money. You can build your roster and you can sort of test and see 
if you want to lock into a big contract. Then there's been number three, which is the one that Keyshawn Johnson is longing for for the Vikings. That's the transition and flexibility bin. That's the Ryan Fitzpatrick, Case Keenum, you know, four years ago, the, what Teddy Bridgewater is in that bin right now. It's the, you can be competitive, probably not going to win a Super Bowl, but you can build a roster and you've got flexibility to move on to the next bin if you need to, right? Mm-hmm. The Vikings are in the fourth bin, and there's a handful of teams or more that are in the fourth bin, which is, I don't think it's a bin that you, I don't think you can win a Super Bowl being in this bin. And we can talk about blame and Kirk and all this stuff. I just, regardless of how the chips fall, I don't think you can win a Super Bowl being in bin four, which is being locked into an expensive, non-game-changing quarterback. Doesn't mean he's a bad quarterback. It just means that he's an expensive, pretty good, but not game-changing, elevating quarterback. Um, Teams get pressured into paying guys like Kirk Cousins a lot of money because they feel like, well, we need a franchise quarterback. But they have then dealt themselves essentially an impossible hand when it comes to actually winning a Super Bowl. What does this come back to, though? Because, one, I will defend the Vikings to my death on signing Cousins in 2018. I think it was the right move. They took a shot. I'm never going to criticize you. When when you – we don't have the cachet in this town to out, – out of one side of, of our mouth say, everybody's cheap. Nobody wants to win. Nobody tries. Mm-hmm. Uh, teams don't sign guys. And then they sign Kirk, and we're like, well, that's a bad signing. Like, you got to pick your path. And I'm never going to fault a team for taking a shot. But the issue with Kirk was not the shot they took initially. It was the extension they gave him after that. Because keep in mind, this contract would be done by now. He would be playing for a different team. And and you would have accepted the fact that it didn't work, which is fine. Like, they took a three-year shot. It was actually made perfect sense. Um, but, but to go back to the marriage an- analogy, what's the problem there? The problem is some people settle and get married because they don't have the confidence in themselves to explore the dating market. And I'm telling you, Christian Ponder and Teddy to a certain degree, but that's just flat out bad luck. But Christian Ponder ruined Rick Spielman's confidence. And to this day, he doesn't have the confidence in himself. He literally, I. so here's, so remove Kirk's name because I feel like th- this is good going to get back yeah, into it, it's very hot button. Kirk. Yeah. So so remove Kirk's name. He's, can we he's, can we replace Kirk with can we can we just replace him with Jared Goff? Like can we just can we pick another quarterback in that bin? Quarterback X be, because the name doesn't matter, the philosophy does, okay? So what Rick did was Rick so so mom and dad are Spielman and Zim. And what Spielman said was, oh, my God, I, I, I whiffed on Ponder badly. Like, if I do that again, I could be fired. Teddy got hurt, and, like, Zim loved him, and now he's gone. Uh, Keenum, to your point, is a ticking time bomb. Okay, we got this guy on the market. These guys, by the way, never become free agents, and this guy has. Now he has for a reason, but uh, we're going to sign him. And so they they do. That's a lack of confidence. So you got married because you met, met a girl who liked you, and you're like, oh, screw it. I'm just getting married to this one. I'm going to forget the dating scene because I don't like it or have confidence. Um, the other question, too, the other question, too, and I feel like we need to remove Zim as, as well because this is a philosophical discussion of people. Yes. So, so, like, if, if we're talking about Cousins and Zimmer, I think that's all – that folks here, they're just like, oh, you, you guys are yeah. ripping them again. So we're, Zim, we're too far, too far down that path now, but your, your effort know, is but, noble here. But I'm trying, <laughs> but I'm trying to paint this as a picture that, that doesn't just go after two people. So the Zimmer component to me is this one. He sees, he is a 1950s dad who goes to work, goes to the bar, comes home at night and yells Sarah's at the kids. Up. Exactly right. But you know what Kirk is? Kirk is the child who's a necessary evil or the wife who's a necessary evil. Mike Zimmer doesn't love quarterbacks. He never will. Again, he tries to stop them for a living. Like his goal is to stop them. He hates them for the most part. And so on on one hand, you've got the GM who very much, it's very clear to me, lost all confidence in identifying Let's all say it together. The most important position in sports. And on the other, you've got a coach that deems that position to be a necessary evil, which is why he ripped Keenum all of 2000. 
17, when he could have been like, this is an unbelievable story. This is fantastic. Mm -hmm. But he saw the downside coming, which, by the way, was coming. But you didn't need to point that out. And if that had been a defensive player, like if that had been random cornerback X having a great year, Mike never would have said that. He would have been like, this is great. This is phenomenal. So. So this is where the Vikings find themselves right now. And I feel like the focus on the names um, creates too much of, uh, well, you guys are haters. No, look at the situation, dissect it. And so some of what Keyshawn said is right. I'm just not going to say that the Cousins initial contract was a mistake because I defended it originally and I loved the idea. It just didn't work out. Yep. I love taking swings. And I think, I think the, If you're going to criticize the contract, it's more the second contract that has his cap hit so high, you know, relative to the rest of the league this year, next year. Um, And in fairness to quarterback X, as (laughs) as you're calling him, um, and and actually, let me let me compare two quarterbacks in the same bin, two guys who make franchise money, you know, thirty plus million dollars a year, but aren't guys who are going to carry the team, and and guys whose contracts now make it harder to build out great offensive lines and great defenses. Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff. The difference, and in, and in fairness to Cousins here, when Goff was with the Rams, the Rams had from top to bottom, from front office to coach to quarterback, even though Goff wasn't amazing, he wasn't Russell Wilson, he wasn't you know one of the – he just wasn't the most talented guy. He was talented enough to be number one overall, but you know he, he lacked in certain areas. They were aligned in trying to do everything – to make him as good as possible. So much so that they actually went to a Super Bowl with him. He was limited, and they went to a Super Bowl with him because they said, offensive guru head coach, he's going to spend a ton of time working with, texting with, watching film with the starting quarterback. We're going to go out. We're going to spend a little extra money on a Sammy Watkins. Like We're going to get that third wide receiver that's explosive. We're going to go get that Andrew Whitworth left tackle in free agency, right? Like We're going to go do things to make the quarterback comfortable and better. And Jared Goff was nowhere near being one of the top 10 quarterbacks, talent-wise or any other thing, when they went to the Super Bowl. But they put everything around him, and they and they committed to Jared Goff's success as a passer and that offense, and they ran the ball. I mean, Todd Gurley was amazing before the injury. The Vikings have done the opposite. You know, the Vikings have said, all right, we got... We got a G- we got a GM that's kind of gun shy when it comes to evaluating quarterbacks. So he's going to kind of sign you as a mercenary and just hope that you can figure it out. But then he's going to put you with a head coach that really doesn't want to have anything to do with you. So much so that he literally didn't watch film with Kirk Cousins until two weeks ago for the first time. Two weeks ago, yep. it's the first time in four seasons they've sat down and watched film together. Can you imagine if Jared Goff and Jared Goff was, you know, at a younger stage in his career when he was working with Sean McVay? Um, ironically, because Kirk Cousins also worked with Sean McVay as a young quarterback. Can you imagine if Sean McVay, for three or four years, was just like, hey, Jared, you're just going to have to kind of, you know, go figure it out. Just You got, you watch film, let me know if you need anything. If they talk. If they talk <laughs> right. In your scenario, which might be they don't talk. Yes. And, and the Vikings, when it comes down to it, all right, we've got some free agency money here. Uh, should we go get another defensive lineman and a third cornerback in free agency, or should we shore up left tackle? Okay, we can only keep so many guys. Should we say goodbye to our above average left tackle? Or should we keep him maybe because he can help our quarterbacks? Like at every turn, the Vikings front office, coaching staff, their personnel moves, everything is almost working against Kirk Cousins. Yes. And 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 I will say, even if those things are working for Kirk Cousins, I don't personally believe that he has certain qualities and uh, intangibles needed to go where the Vikings ultimately need to go, yep. but he's not getting the fair shake that other guys are getting around the league. Let me ask you this: if we if we transplant Kirk today to San Francisco or the Rams, though, and that's who signs him, what's your thought process? Because I I would say this personally: I think there's a blank canvas there. I well, think the, well you, they would they would lean into him more. They would than lean the Vikings. into him. They, they would accept what he doesn't do well, but they wouldn't give him this sort of like weird free pass to be like, well, you don't do that well, but we'll just try that with you. Like, like Kirk Cousins might be a really nice car, but they don't take care of it. It gets mm-hmm. no oil. It gets no nothing. And no, but I mean, it, so, so eventually it just starts to, it sputters and sort of breaks down and okay, it's still okay, but it's not great. But if, if Kirk, I mean, 
Kirk did himself by being a mercenary. He did himself, I think, a massive disservice because he's a guy that needs somebody to work with. Like he is not he he doesn't have the the resume or wherewithal that some some guys do. And this is a very small list. But I mean, Brady can go to Tampa Bay and have like five or six or seven or or eight not great games. Go into his head coach and say, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to coach the team now. It's my team now. I mean, because he did. They just switched their offense. He he was like, screw this, because he's Tom Brady. But, you know, Kirk Cousins is being – I mean, think about this right now, you guys. There are NFL – offensive geniuses operating in this league i i mean flat out there are there are incredibly smart and and the game has changed and all of those things and the vikings and this is no indictment of the human being but the vikings have a 34 year old son of an og oc from yesteryear coaching kirk cousins yeah and a head coach that checks in once in a while yeah, and and he, you know, and I mean, Mike, Mike is going to do what Mike does, but but I mean, there's just so there's so many flaws behind the scenes here, um, and I don't think that you can put your offense on on autopilot and sort of ignore it and be like it'll fly itself, especially mm-hmm. with Kirk. Mm-hmm. I do think if Kirk had gone, if the timing had been right, and Kirk had gone and played for Shanahan with the Niners. I do think they could have been very successful. I really do. Yeah, and and that that was uh, that was definitely in the works. Like those conversations were happening. I think January, February, yep. leading into the league year, and you know, well, maybe maybe that'll still. I think they're going to ride the Trey Lance train for a few years. Oh, and see what they happens, will. But but case in point to watch Matthew Stafford. Yeah, only one game, but no. But I'm saying, good. but I'm saying the season intrigues me now. Um, and pe- people said, well, he, he had, uh, he had Calvin Johnson, you guys are so okay. He did have some really good players and so is Kirk, but he's also had some buffoon coaches, yeah. right? And the coaches matter here. Like you can't just be, be like overcome the adversity of the fact the coach doesn't care or, or is Matt Patricia, who's a complete Can, joke. Didn't Calvin Johnson not mention the lions in his hall of fame speech? Didn't he give possible. like a 10 minute Hall of Fame speech didn't, and didn't it, mention the Lions? Very and, and didn't he go in as blank? I don't think he, for the, you know, like I don't think oh, he you, went you in as a member of. I don't think you go in as a member of a team in the NFL. You don't. Do you? You, you just don't. go in. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Only in baseball um, do you choose the hat that you gotcha. want to wear. But yeah. even like taking, taking the Keyshawn conversation, the dating conversation with the Vikings and me being the eligible bachelor here, like, let me explain. I think like the timeline of what has happened here with like in relationships as it as it pertains to the Vikings and like their last three prominent starting quarterbacks, right? Like Teddy, Teddy was your first love. Like Teddy was supposed to be it. Like you were your high school sweethearts, you stayed together, everything was gonna be great. But then Teddy got she, into a coma. She got pancreatic and, cancer. Yeah. And Teddy basically entered a coma and you were like, I have to move on. And wrapped Teddy wants car, me to move wrapped on. Wrapped her car around um, a tree. It's a yeah. car accident for sure. It, mm. it was a mutual agreement of, so hey, this isn't going to work. It sucks. We had a, a, an obstacle here. We're going to have to overcome it. And then Case, Case comes along, right? And Case is the greatest one night stand you have ever had. And you still talk about that one night stand <laughs> years later. It was that good. It was that damn good that you still bring it up. Four years later, after the fact, you were with someone else. You've been with someone, other people. But that one, that one night, you still talk about it. That was Case Keenum. You recommend Case to some of your other single friends? Yeah, like, well, exactly. Hey, Case, bounces, you got, yeah. Case bounces from locker room to locker Cleveland. room. Cleveland, what's going on? <laughs> um, and then with hey, Kirk, Houston, I know you got a problem down there. Yeah. Go check out Case um, again. Five three zero nine. It's changed since last. <laughs> you won't. Me- you will not forget that night. Uh, and then Kirk, Kirk was this like arranged marriage through like this dating app, not even a dating app. Cause like dating apps are kind of iffy. Like it was like the highest tier of dating apps. They, yes. they met your, they met your needs. You were looking for this person. Oh my God. Kirk Cousins is it. You've been waiting for this person your entire life. Here it is. He make he checks all your boxes. You've been waiting for a franchise quarterback. You've been Accuracy, waiting for love. Accuracy, white teeth. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> stability like consistency you know what you're getting out of this person and then you realized oh crap this chemistry sucks 
yes, we are supposed to like each other, but guess what? We don't like each other, and it's a not a, it's not a good relationship. My family hates Kirk. My yes. whole family. It's, <laughs> My whole family Aaron hates Rogers it. And o- Olivia Munn. The whole family hates Kirk. We wrote a eulogy for Uncle Bob, 2,000 yeah. words, and Kirk wasn't mentioned. That's it was what, crazy. What happened? Uncle Kyle. <laughs> My God. So Dude, that's, that, uh, that's it. pretty that's, spot on. It's it is. That's what it is. It's yeah. what it is. Well, as bad as the Vikings have it from a quarterback standpoint, even when the Bears get it right, the Bears can't seem to get it right. When does the Matt Nagy thing end? Week three of, of year five? This guy, This guy's a fraud. There's nothing there. It just, it just, it, there's no development from anybody. Just a horrible, horrible situation. <laughs> Bears vent line, courtesy of our friends on, I think, the score and ESPN 1000 in Chicago. Mm. That Andy is Dalton, brutal yeah. when that guy hits the pole. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, that's, that's painful. Yeah, <laughs> that guy has had a, had a couple beers. Let's hear from Chris and Evans. <laughs> I don't want to hear anybody talk about Justin Fields and what he should have done and we need to start him because take away that one play that was picked off on the first drive, which, again, was a Matt Nagy classic. He called a timeout on the opening drive. He can't end a half with any timeouts. He called a timeout for a play that didn't work. And I don't know where Andy Dalton was going, but you take away that one play, what did Andy Dalton do wrong today? What did, what did he do? <laughs> Tell me, what do I do bad? <laughs> what did you do right exactly? Dude, that, it's funny. So a lot of Bears fans have the same complex as Vikings fans with Kirk. It's like, well, what did, what's not his fault? What did he do wrong? He didn't throw any, you know, what did he do wrong? Well, wh- how is he elevating your team? Is he helping you win a Super Bowl? Why are you, Poor Andy why are you mediocre? <laughs> he is literally playing out the string and trying to milk this for as many paychecks as he can possibly get. Poor guy. Uh, well, Mike and Rockford has. Th- Why is it that the, the Chicago Bears organization continues to give these guys the time to correct the mistakes they made? Ryan Pace single handedly has destroyed the entire roster of this team. Granted, I'll give him some credit. He, he got a couple of picks in late rounds. He made some good picks in the later rounds. But he is constantly known since he came to the Bears to draft up constantly for first and second round picks and give draft capital away. This is the problem. We have no depth. Well, let me introduce you to Rick Spielman, who drafted 38 players over the last three years and also has depth problems. So it can go both ways. That's great. Bears vent line Uh, presented by Federated Mutual Insurance Company. If you're looking to protect your company, Maybe a little bit more risk management tools and resources and people that have been around the industry for a long time. Why don't you check out federatedinsurance.com. Find out how you can improve and help your bottom line through risk management, which a lot of companies and business owners don't really think as much about as they should. Federatedinsurance.com. And remember, it's federated. It's our business to protect yours. All right, we got to get to write that down and an accountability session. And I got to warn you guys on uh, on this and especially on Purple Daily, a lot yeah. of things have come off the board, a lot of shuffling. So be be ready for it. Very exciting. 